verse here in Psalms chapter 23, the Lord is my shepherd, amen. The psalmist knew what he was talking about. When he said, the Lord is my shepherd, David knew what he was talking about. He was the shepherd here, and he'd been following God, and he'd been looking to the Lord, and he'd been asking for God's help. Many times he was all alone in his, in his business of being a shepherd. And he began to think, I'm shepherding these sheep. I'm watching these sheep. I'm tending these sheep. And he learned a lot from tending those sheep. But then it dawned on him by the, by the help of the Holy Ghost of God. He got to thinking one day by the divine inspiration of the Spirit of God. When he was sitting alone sometime, he remembered, you know what? I'm the shepherd of these sheep. But the Lord is my shepherd. Amen. When that ever gets real good down in your soul and gets real good down in your heart, you can't help but having a good time in the Lord to know that the Lord is your shepherd. I turned the news on a little bit this morning. I do about every morning just for a few minutes. My stomach, you know, after I ate breakfast, I can sit down because I've got something in my stomach and I can stomach it just for a little bit. I sat down and watched a little bit of the news. Friend, this world is blowing up. Where in the world, what, what is going on in this world? We can't take care of our own country. Every country in the world is after Israel. We ain't standing behind Israel like we should. Amen. And the whole world's in a mess. But guess what? The Lord's my shepherd. Amen. And friend, today if you're here and you know God, he's your shepherd. If you follow him, he'll make your life have meaning to it. He'll make your life have joy to it. He'll turn, he'll turn the honey pots of the Word of God over in your soul, and He will cause you to be helped and be blessed if you realize what the psalmist realized, the Lord is my shepherd. And he goes on to say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now the psalmist, as he wrote this, David, as he wrote this, I believe he remembered that he took care of those sheep. It was his responsibility to take care of those sheep. When those sheep would wander off, he'd have to go and bring them back in. When those sheep would, would, would need water, he'd have to take them beside the still waters. We'll read it to you in a minute. If they needed somewhere new to eat, he'd lead them into green pastures. Oh, my friend, today, if we will follow Jesus, if we will allow him to be the shepherd of our souls, he will lead us in the right way. Amen. I shall not want for anything that I need from God. Hallelujah. Now, there's things in life that I want that I'll never have probably, but I don't need them. Amen? Come on now. Everybody in here just thought of something you wanted, but you may never had, but you really don't need it to start with. What do I need in life? I need a roof over my head. I need clothes on my back. I need shoes on my feet. I need food in my stomach, and I can do without that for a little bit and still not hurt. But let me tell you something today. God said, I'll supply all your need according to my riches and glory, his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now, what does Jesus do for us? What did the David do for those sheep? He went out in the morning, he counted to make sure they was all here. He said, and God's never lost one of his, by the way. And he'd look for the, he'd look at those sheep. Okay, I gotta take you to get something to eat today. So he'd lead them down to the green pastures. Amen. He said, Well, you're gonna need something to drink. I'll take you down by the still waters and let you drink. And then he thinks you're going to need a place to rest. And so I'll lead you over here in the shade of, of, of these trees and let you lay down here and rest. I'm taking care of you. Those sheep had want of nothing. Those sheep had no reasons not to trust David, their shepherd. Let me tell you something, friend. God's the same way with us. We get up in the morning, if we'll look to him, he says, well, I'm going to feed you today, and God feeds you. Amen. He'll feed you physically. He'll feed you spiritually. If we'll open up his word and read his word, we'll get our spiritual food just like I eat my oatmeal for breakfast this morning, only, only it's not near as sweet as the word of God is. And then, he, then you know, he'll, he'll say, well, uh, you, you're going to need a place to uh, get something to drink, so he'll give me all the, all the cool, clear water I need to drink. You're going to need a place to rest when you get through with your day. And I go home and lay down in my bed, and I lay me down to sleep. Amen. Oh, thank God I'm glad that I've got a shepherd in the Lord Jesus Christ that cares far more for me than David cared for those sheep. Only he, you can't imagine the love you have for those sheep. That's what the shepherd is. Now, sometimes David would run across a sheep that was just a rebel. 
even ran across a sheep that's just a little rebel. Uh, all, every time he turned around, look, he was into something. Every time he turned around like a little puppy dog, little puppies get into everything. There's nothing they won't eat, nothing they won't chew up, nothing they won't bite off. I mean, they, they're just into everything. And sometimes David would run across a, one of his little lambs, and that's just what they would. He'd catch them, they'd get out, of the, get out of the corral. Or they'd wander off from the rest of the herd. And listen, if they run off from the rest of the herd, then danger was out there because there was wolves, there was bears, there was lions. All of these things that could be done to them if they got away from the flock. So once in a while, David would have to find one, look, I've been good to you. I've tried my best to teach you not to stray away from the flock. But you've got to learn that you can't stray away from the flock. You're going to get hurt. And David said, the only way I'm going to keep you here is to discipline you. And that shepherd would pick that little lamb up, and it hurt to think about what he would do. And he'd look at that little lamb and he'd pet its head and say, I love you. And I'm doing this for your benefit. I'm not doing this because I don't like you. I'm doing this because I love you. And he would take that rod that he always carried with him and he'd stretch that little lamb's legs out and he'd break the leg. A preacher, that's horrible. That's inhumane. That's cruel. He did that to those sheep because he loved those little lambs. And then he would take that little lamb off and it would hurt it would be in pain but he'd take that little old lamb off and he would rub oil all over it rub, rub that uh, soothing oil all over those little legs and then he would splint them back together and set them back together and he would wrap them up and even though he had hurt that little lamb that little lamb couldn't go nowhere except he was right there with him had to carry him for a while and then he got to where he could stand on those little feet and he couldn't go nowhere. He couldn't bend those front legs. He could just wobble around, but he stayed right with the shepherd. Why? Because that's the way the shepherd had to teach the sheep. You've got to stay close to me. And then uh, one day, those little splints came off. Of, you know, a few weeks later, those little splints, he took them off, and that little sheep's legs was healed up. But guess what? From then on, that shepherd had a hard time keeping that little sheep out from under his feet. Why? Because he learned that the safest place to be was near the shepherd. He learned that if, that if he was going to enjoy a good life, he had to stay close to the shepherd. You know what happens to God's people sometimes? We stray away. And if we keep straying away and keep straying away, listen, God, God's going to discipline you and I because he's our shepherd. And we might keep straying away and straying away and straying away. Till one day, God says, look, you got to quit this. And he might have to put us in a place where we can't do anything but stay close to him. Now, be careful what you pray and what you ask for. And I wasn't in rebellion at this time when this happened in my life, but be careful what you pray for. I wasn't studying my Bible like I should. I wasn't praying like I should. And I was giving the excuse to God, God, I don't have enough time. I, I don't have enough time. I, I, I'm busy all the time. And I was. I was busy in ministry. And I was neglecting those things. And I thought, Lord, if I just had some more time, I said, God, if you'll just give me some more time, guess what happened? I broke my ankle and was laid up flat on my back for eight weeks. And you know what the first thing I remembered when I came to from breaking my ankle, Lord looked at me and said, now you got all the time you need. I'll never complain again. I'll never complain again about not having enough time because God's got a way of making time for us if we declare to God we don't have enough time. We're busier than we've ever been before, but we should never get too busy to get close to the shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. If you'll stay close to him, my friend, you'll not want for anything. But if you get away from God, you're going to have a lot of wants in your life. God supplies their needs. He don't necessarily supply our wants, but he supplies their needs. I, I, I took the liberty the other day for just about 20 minutes, and I stopped by the Harley Davidson place. No, I didn't buy one. I can't afford them, but I did just want to look. You know, I did more just want to get a taste. Boy, they sound good. And they got some pretty ones in there. They got one my wife would approve of. It's got three wheels. And she would approve of that, but it's $30,000. I can't buy that. 
But I just looked and I grinned at myself and thought, well, you got to see it, amen. Now go, go ahead and do something you know you can do, amen. Now, could I have bought one of them? I could have went and dad bought me a motorcycle, but did I need that? Oh, look at some of you ain't so much. No, I don't need it. I'll tell you, my wife says, no, I don't need it. But would I like to have one? Yeah. Can I think of good reasons to have one? Yeah. I'll save me some gas, come back forth to Gables Creek. My wife won't get on it, says so. But listen, God will supply our needs. He might not give us our wants, but the good shepherd of heaven, amen, will supply what we need. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And friend, you as a child of God, when you're close to Jesus, you name me one thing. You name me one thing that God doesn't supply for you, and you can't do it. You say, well, I need this real bad. When you need it real bad, God will give it to you. God, Listen, God don't operate on our timetable. He operates on His. I've, I've seen some things come right down to the wire before. Lord, uh, you promised me. God, you promised me. But God's never been one minute late. Hallelujah to God. He's always on time because He promised me that He would supply my needs. He promised me that if I stay close to Him, I shall not walk. This old preacher up in New York, I forget his name, but he was a famous preacher. And uh, he, was, he, had, he had a prayer life like no other. And they said that he could pray. I mean, and, and he talked to God like, you know, like he was talking to anyone else. He said it came one day. He had a bunch of bills that hadn't been paid, and it was coming down to the end of the day. And he said, God, I've just got a day or so to pay these bills. I, what am I going to do? You promised me, God, that you wouldn't let me. Wa- and uh, God, I didn't, I didn't ask. And God, I need your help here. And Lord, you're going to have to do something. And he said he got those bills out, laid them down in the floor, got down over them and said, God, if you don't pay these bills, your name and mine's going to be mud. Because he told everybody how God just supplied his needs and how God would take care of everything. Guess what happened? The money came in, the bills got paid the next day. My God shall supply all your needs. I shall not want. Now, that's an introduction to a message that I intended to preach to you this morning. However, I'm not making too good a time, so we'll just go as the Lord leads us the rest of the day. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. You know, sometimes God has to make us lay down and and rest. You rest a while. Now, that's what vacations are for, I believe, is we get away and take a little time off so that we don't take a little time off forever for, you know, for, uh, you know, we just don't break away and break apart for, for good. Sometimes you get to where you're about to snap and you just need to get away and go hunting or fishing or whatever you'd like to do, and you need to take a few days off. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. What else does it say that he does? He leadeth me beside the still waters. What's more common than a still water? What's more common than a still water? And there, as he leads you beside uh, those green, into those green pastures, he makes you lie down in those green pastures, and he leads you beside the still waters, and there you sit beside the still waters, and guess what he does? He restores your soul. Friend, we're living in perilous times. Don't nobody ever think that we're not. Uh, get your head out of the sand. If you think everything's going well in this world, it's not. Jesus is fixing to come back. What do you want to be? What state do you want to be spiritually when the Lord comes back? If Jesus come back right now and snatched us out of, out of here, would you all be happy with your life you're living right now? Would you be happy? Would you know that you're as close to God? God help me. Lord, help this preacher. If he come back right now, am I ready to go? Am I ready to meet him? Sure, I'm saved by the grace of God, but that's not what all it means. If you're ready to meet the Lord, friend, you're looking for his coming. If there's more important things to you in your life than serving the Lord and being, and being close to Jesus, then you're not ready to go. You may be saved and you'll go, but you're not ready to go if there's more important things in your life than serving the Lord and being his servant and being close to him, then you're not ready to meet the Lord. He leadeth me beside the still. You need your soul restored. He restoreth my soul. Friend, I like it when the times that I get alone with God and say, Lord, I've had, I've had a hard time. I've had a rough day. God, I need you to restore my soul. And guess what he does? He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. 
See, if you follow God, you're going to live a righteous, holy life. You know what's wrong? So many people, they're out in sin, being in name. Of the, listen, we need Christians in this world. Hello, wake up. We need men, women, boys, and girls that will name the name of Christ and walk the walk. Amen. Speaking's easy, but to walk with the Lord, you need to be led of God. He restoreth my soul. Oh, friend, I'm glad for the day that he does. And then when he restores your soul, he'll lead you in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Did everywhere you go last week, was that where God wanted you to go? Were you led by the Lord in everything you did? Is all your worldly amusements and worldly entertainment, were they led by the Lord or were they led by the flesh? Oh, my, this ain't in my notes. I promise you, this is not what I had intended to preach, but here's where God's got me. If he leads you and he restores you, he'll lead you in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. What is righteousness? Right with God. That's what righteousness is. Many, many Christians want the blessing of God, but they don't want to pay the price of living close to the Lord. You can't have both. You can have the blessing of God, and you can have abundant blessings of God if you let the Lord Jesus rule in your heart. If you follow Him above all else, you let the Lord Jesus rule in your heart, and you'll walk around with a song. I, I, sometimes I guess I get a little ahead, of, get a little excited around work when I don't know that I am. And I was standing putting out something that I had to work, and a, I paid no attention to somebody. This, and I, I was singing. What was I singing to myself, I thought? I don't remember. Some song I was singing, some, some, some hymn I was singing out of the Bible. And this old, this old fellow, he got up real close to me. He says, you happy, ain't you? He says, are you singing a song? I said, yes, sir, I'm singing a song. And I didn't have to say a word to him. He didn't have to say a word to me. I know exactly what he was thinking, and I know what I was thinking. Hallelujah. I got something to sing about. Amen. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Friend, whatever you do, whatever you do has a reflection on Jesus. If you live and walk the path of evil, then that has, and you name the name of Christ, that has a reflection upon Jesus. If you're lost and you don't know God, and you're living a wicked, sinful life, then you know what you're doing? It reflects upon Jesus, because Jesus died to save you from your sin. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He restoreth my soul. Oh my, I'm glad that he does restore me. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, thou comforts, they comfort me. Thomas said, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You know what that was? That's a real place. I never understood that exactly until I went to Israel and saw the valley of the shadow of death. There is a valley of shadow of death. And it is a very narrow valley. We call it a holler around here. But it's a very narrow, matter of fact, it looks like a great old big gully because it's at the bottom of it, it's no wider than this church. And at the top of it, it might double the size of this church. But it's considered a valley and there's things grow down in there. And, it, and David would have to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And why was it called that? Because robbers would hang out in those cliffs and those caves around it. Wolves would come along and they would wait for shepherds to come by with sheep so they could attack the sheep. The lions and the bears would all be there in the valley of the shadow of death. And David said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because he knew God. And I'm telling you, friend, we walk through dangers, toils, and many things, many snares of this life. But if you're walking with the Lord, thank God we can, we can walk with him and fear no evil. You think we're not living in an evil world? Look around. Open your eyes. Get your head out of the sand. We're living in a wicked world, an evil world. And Christians are being persecuted by the millions around the world. Christians are being martyred for their faith around the world. Friend, we're living in perilous times. Amen. But God, the Lord, is my shepherd. Amen. Y'all, some of you looking at me like I've gone crazy. No, I've just come to realize, friend, that I've got a God in heaven that loves me. And in these perilous times that we live in, the Lord is my shepherd. Is he yours? Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. 
in the presence of your enemies, when the Lord anoints your head with oil, friend, you've got grace, you've got goodness, you've got all that you need, you've got the power of God. That's what that oil is. It is a symbol of the power in the Spirit of God. And what we need as believers today is a touch of the old-fashioned Holy Ghost of God. We need the oil of the Spirit of God that, that, that is upon our head and that is all over us. We need the anointing of the power of the Spirit of God. Now, you go to talking about the anointing of the Spirit of God, and a lot of Baptist people get real nervous. They don't know what to think about being anointed by the Spirit of God. But I want to tell you something, friend. We all ought to pray that God would get on us and that God would rule us and that we would subject ourselves to Him so that He might rule us with the Spirit of God. Does that make any good sense to you? Listen, if I go the way that I want to go, I'm going to go the way I want to go, and I'm going to make a mess. I'm not going to follow God if I go the way the old flesh wants to go. You're not either. Oh, you may make an attempt for a while to follow God in the old flesh, but you can't do it, friend. Your old flesh is more powerful. You need to crucify the old flesh and say, by the help of the Spirit of God that lives in me, I'm going to follow God and rely upon Him to anoint you and to fill you and thrill you with His Spirit that you might walk unafraid in this world, that you may walk unafraid of the dangers and unafraid of the, of the comments that might come your way because you're a Christian. Amen. We need to stand, friend. We need to understand who our leader is. We need to understand who our shepherd is. This world ain't got no leadership, but I tell you what God's people have. Amen. And if we'll bow to the leadership of the Spirit of God and acknowledge Jesus as our shepherd, there's nothing that we can't accomplish for the Lord. Amen. There's nothing that this church can't accomplish for the Lord if we bow to the leadership and the anointing of the Spirit of God. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Friend, if you're saved by God's grace, and the Lord is your shepherd, you're going to live with God forever. Amen. Now look, this world's a pretty world. I plan on going on vacation here just a, you know, just a week or so, and I'm going to go off, and I'm going to sit down, and I'm going to fish to my little heart's content, if it can ever be made. I even bought me a new chair to fish in, so if it's raining, I ain't going to get wet. And if the sun gets too hot, I just pull the visor over. Man, I'm going to be all right with my fishing. This world's got some pretty things. This world has got some things that I like to look at. This world's got some things that the flesh likes to do, but ain't godly. Friend, you be careful about your worldly entertainment that it's all right and it pleases God. Amen. Usually it gets pretty quiet when the preacher goes to talking about these things. And I'll tell you something. If what you do, you wouldn't have God going doing it with you, you don't need to be doing it. Amen. So you can't shut out the all-seeing eye of God. Whatever, whatever you do, God's there watching you, and he's right there with you. Matter of fact, if you lead him in, have him living in your heart, wherever you go, he's going. If you're doing something that's going in the place of Jesus, then you're taking him right with you when you do those things. Live a righteous life. Live a holy life. Let God be your shepherd. Let Jesus be your guide. Let the light of, of the word of the Lord Jesus shine in your heart that it might lead you and guide you in all spiritual truth. Is the Lord your shepherd? And I had, I had a, a good outline, I thought. I guess that shows me what I know, don't it? Maybe I'll give that to you another Sunday. But I'll tell you something. The thing you need to remember when you, take, when you leave here today you need to ask yourself this question, is the Lord my shepherd? Number one, you need to ask him, is he my Lord? Number one, you need to ask him, am I saved by God's grace? Lord, are you living in my life? Lord, are you, are, have you saved me by your grace? If you, if you can say in your heart, I'm saved, amen. The Holy Spirit of God says, amen, amen. If I say I'm saved and the Holy Spirit of God says amen, friend, you know what? I'm saved by God's grace. And when I say I'm saved, Holy Ghost of God down inside says amen. If you can say I'm saved down in your heart, you'd say I know I'm saved and the Holy Spirit of God says amen, then you're all right. But if you say I'm saved and you don't get no response from the Spirit of God, guess what? He ain't living in there. The Spirit of God is not living in you. If you've never been birthed into the family of God, you're not his child. You're lost without God, and you're on your way to hell without him. God, help us. 
Friend, I'm telling you, I, as urgently as I know how to tell you this morning, if you're here and you don't know Jesus, you better wake up. God loves you. Jesus died for you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And friend, if you're here today and you don't know God, you better get right with God. I, preacher, I've heard that all my life. Listen, we're nearer now than we've ever been. Jesus is soon coming or you're going out by the way of the grave, one or the other. I've got my whole life ahead of me. I'll get right when it's, when it's about time to die. No, you won't. If your God's not dealing with you, you won't get right. You'll get right with the Lord when the Spirit of God's dealing with your heart. You'll get saved when God says that you need to get saved or you won't get saved if He's not dealing with you. Is the Lord dealing with you today about your soul? Are you saved by God's grace? Do you know if you die right now that you'll go to heaven to be with the Lord? If you can, my friend, then you're all right. If you're saved by the grace of God, then that's good and well. But if you're saved by the grace of God and you're not living for the Lord, there's no better day to right now to say, Lord, I want you to be my shepherd. I want, you to, I want to follow you. I want you to lead me until you come back, which is going to be soon. God, I want to be found following you in the right path. You say, Preacher, you don't know what's going on in my life. It doesn't matter. God doesn't tangle any mess you give him. There ain't, nobody, there ain't no mess that nobody's got into that God in heaven ain't able to untangle and fix and, make, and let you walk straight. Amen. If you're here and you don't know God today, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent of your sin. Turn to the Lord. If he's dealing with your heart today, then friends, you know, listen, what is the gospel? The gospel is believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. The gospel is believing that Jesus came, was born of a virgin, lived a sinless life, that he was crucified on the cross of Calvary to pay my sin debt and to pay your sin debt, and that he went from the cross to the tomb, and on the third day he arose victorious over death, hell, and the grave to believe that with all your heart and ask Jesus, Lord, I believe the gospel. Will you save me? He will. But if you die without having done that, you'll go to hell to spend eternity. God help us. Father, we thank you for the word of God this morning. Lord, I'm through. Lord, I... Pray, God, you'd help us, Lord, right now. God bless, Lord, in the invitation. Lord, someone here don't know you today, and I pray that today they would come to know you in Jesus' name.